Question number 10, Darian Fenton. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Labour. Are the proposed changes to the Holidays Act 2003 being progressed under urgency this week, part of the Government's plans to close the wage gap with Australia and reduce the number of Kiwi workers moving to Australia? Honourable Kate Wilkinson. Mr Speaker, part of the Government's plan to grow the economy is to reduce red tape and increase choices and opportunities. The Holidays Amendment Bill is part of that plan. Especially for Pansy. Darren Fenton. Yes, I'm not sure. Uh, point of order, Mr. Speaker. Point of order, Darren Fenton. It was on notice. It was a pretty straightforward question. The question is on notice and asks, uh, you know, while it isn't a, it is a question that seeks an opinion, but it asks, are the proposed changes to the Holidays Act 2003 being progressed under urgency this week part of the government's plans to close the wage gap with Australia and reduce the number of Kiwi workers moving to Australia? Now, I think I heard the minister answer as part of the government's plans for economic growth. But the question didn't actually ask that. Uh, maybe the Minister could answer in greater relation to the primary question. I accept, though, there's no precise answer to it. But uh, no, I would ask the, the Minister, though, to, to uh, relate a Mr. little Mr. more Mr. to Speaker, the... Obviously, part of our, our plan is to grow the economy so that actually we don't lose so many workers going to Australia. We do get some workers coming back from Australia, and we want to have economic conditions here that are conducive to that and a government that actually likes workers. Just uh, Darian Fenton. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Supplementary to the Minister. How is allowing the fourth week of annual leave to be traded for cash part of that plan, the government's plan, given that it will see Australian workers enjoying more holidays than us and it will still not bring Kiwi workers, whose average wage is just 60 per cent of the Australian average wage, anywhere near the earnings of their Australian counterparts. The Hon. Kate uh, Mr Speaker, the, the member, I think, misunderstands the popular policy of, of transferring or the ability to ask to transfer that fourth week for, for cash, which even, even her own leader actually thinks is quite a good idea. But can I say that, that is, it is voluntary? The employee does not have to ask for it, and it's part of the increased choices and opportunities for workers in New Zealand. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Was the Prime Minister correct when he said, quote, we also have more public holidays than Australia, close quote, or is it the truth that with a maximum of 11 public holidays legislated for, and as few as nine in 2010 and 2011, uh, New Zealand actually has fewer public holidays than every state in Australia? and that her proposal to give employers the ability to decide when alternative days for public holidays must be taken by employers will only put Kiwi workers' holiday entitlements even further behind Australia. The Hon. Kate Wilkinson. Mr Speaker, I always agree with the Prime Minister. Darren Fenton. Not good enough. Not good enough. All right. Well, he's Order the member Supplem could just ask a question. She'd ask, okay. does she agree with the Prime Minister and the member Minister said she did? Yes, so all right. next supplementary. Thank you, Mr Speaker. If the government is serious about wanting to stop Kiwi workers moving to Australia for better wages and conditions, will she consider compensating workers for the public holidays they will miss out next year when Easter Monday and Anzac Day coincide, as all Australian states have agreed to do? If not, why not? The Hon. Kate uh, Wilkinson. Mr. Mr Speaker, I do, I do understand that next year is, is uh, particularly challenging in the sense that Easter Monday is also Anzac Day and so it's two public holidays fall on one. It is not a uh, part of our uh, consideration to actually Mondayise Anzac Day because Anzac Day is a really special day in New Zealand's history, not just a public holiday, and I think it actually should be revered for that. Darian Fenton. Supplementary. Thank you, Mr Speaker. To the Minister. Order, I want to hear Darian Fenton, please. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Okay. Does she agree with John Key's statement that, quote, long hours at work, both parents and employment, childcare shortages, growing interest rates and rising bills can create a far from ideal environment for good parenting and healthy family relationships, close quote. If so, why is her government advocating for longer hours at work by allowing the cashing in of annual leave, forcing both parents into work through the future focus reforms and, and uh, rising bills through its increase to GST. The Hon. Kate Wilkinson. Uh, Mr Speaker, the, the member is under a misapprehension there. We are not allowing for longer hours of work. In fact, what we're doing is giving more choice to workers. Darren Fenton. Thank you, Mr Speaker. To the Minister. Will require 
requiring a medical certificate for one day's illness under her Holidays Amendment Bill make any difference to the cost to New Zealand of ill health, estimated by Treasury to be at least $5 billion a year, with the biggest costs coming from those who drag themselves off to work in spite of sickness? And how will her changes improve productivity and help close the gap with Australia? The uh, Mr Kate Speaker, I, I understand that the Treasury report that that member is referring to um, actually doesn't investigate whether people take sickies, so it actually doesn't have any implications for the proposed changes in the holidays legislation. The changes regarding proof of sickness are very minor, very sensible. Most employees will experience no change from the current regime. But, Mr Speaker, unjustified sickies clearly reduce productivity and put pressure on other members of staff who do, do turn up to work. Question number 11. Heck